nice small group and most of us um yeah like have known each other there's uh it's, and it's nice to get together um under better circumstances because the last time i talked to michelle was we were kind of in the height of the pandemic last year um so this is a lot nicer being back in person and doing all our doing all the stuff that uh is our reason for our, our jobs um we wanted to start off this session just talking about like mental health has been a real focus so wanted to open up with how has the return to campus affected um the mental health of student participants and you know what your experience has been with your with your student members at, at this point so Uh, I can jump in. So I think nothing but positive. Um, I think everyone is eager and excited um, to be back. And um, obviously, we've had to adapt through all of um, our local public health uh, rules. So um, yeah, it's been everyone's been very cooperative. And I just think they're glad to be back. Our, our student leaders are, um, we're finding at least on the um, personal training side that they're there a lot of our staff are new I don't know if other people are experiencing that because we so many people graduated um during the pandemic so um they're just they're here and they're eager and they're you know ready to learn and and push their programs so I think all in all I haven't heard anything negative um to date so knock on wood but <laughs> So uh, at Ryerson, we're actually virtual for the majority of, <laughs> of classes right now. So in terms of our student staff, they're actually finding it a little bit stressful because trying to balance the virtual side of things. And um, we have open, we do have some in-person classes and the students that do attend are happy to be back. Um, but that notion of having to balance between, you know, commuting to come in <laughs> just for a workout is like you know people weigh that balance we do do some virtual offerings as well um, but from a student staff perspective I know they find it challenging trying to um, balance the two since most of their academic classes are still virtual I'm finding uh something similar to what's being said here so our students were very happy to be back they are all in person and doing well, um, but then kind of a month in, then they kind of got overwhelmed because they aren't used to having that time of having to be in person and having to, you know, get up, get to class, get things done, as well as there's so many restrictions on campus in terms of um, you can't sit and study with a bunch of friends in the um, in our UCC anymore. and the space on campus to actually sit and study is pretty much non-existent. Um, so I think they're trying to find other ways to do it. So they were excited the first month to be back and see everyone, but now, you know, midterms are hitting and they're getting quite stressed. Um, so balancing shifts and even in here, we have a staff room and a kitchen where they used to be able to stay in between classes or before shift and study and get some stuff done. And now they aren't able to do that because that area is shut down to them. Um, and we're still having to book in sessions to get into our facility um, just because we don't have the staff to accommodate that many people coming through our doors. So uh, it's it's been a little difficult, but we're still in person and we're still open. So we're doing well compared to where we were at last year. We had a, a good talk with one of our facilities staff members today. We we're at a, a Remembrance Day ceremony, and he made the point of saying um, after the ceremony that it's it's important to kind of appreciate where we're at. Um, so, Michelle, to your point, like there's we we're all going to have our individual struggles for sure, and I mean everybody's on a different campus, so there's going to be things that are a little bit different compared to you know at Ryerson or Windsor or Mac. Um, but we are open, which I think is, uh, from what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm hearing that it's in general to be around people again, which is great. 
Um, at Mac, I think we were the only school in Ontario that closed in March 2020 and didn't reopen again until summer of uh, 2021. We were closed for like a year, well, like over a year and a half. Um, and that was really tough on our students. And I mean, I noticed it the most with the student staff because we have a huge, huge group of student staff um, in our, in, for our building. Uh, so they're, they're happy to be back. And um, it's been really well received. The members have been really cooperative, cooperative. Our school is still almost entirely online. It's like 80, 90%. So most undergraduate students have few, if any, courses in person, unless they have a labs or um, <clears throat> like some of the music and humanities, that kind of thing. But most of it's being done online. So um, however, we've got, uh, I think it's 7,000 in resident, 8,000 in residence. So um, there are students on campus and th that's who we're serving. So I'm, I'm actually in the opposite of Michelle. I'm overstaffed because we went, we were really prepared. We're also under construction. So we're in like temporary spaces. It's just like a perfect S show, if you know what I'm saying, of <laughs> circumstances where we've, um, we're in temporary spaces. We had to move equipment over the year and a half, like four times of trying to be like, oh, we're going to operate here. Oh, now there's COVID. Oh, no, we're going to do like right, right? So the staff have been amazing. They've been really helpful, really cooperative. Um, they're always amazing. I'm not, I wasn't surprised. Uh, I will say that I feel like now they're stressed. Like the, it, I think it's the exactly what everybody's saying is that for my the staff that are working, they're in person all the time and they're seeing people. So they're a little bit like, oh, you know, like maybe just not used to the rhythm of real life which I can understand. So, but overall good, like it's definitely way better than it was. Um, across our campus though, we're seeing a huge demand for mental health support and uh, student wellness is seeing a huge demand. So we're looking at really seriously at getting some programming off the ground where a, a recreation will support mental health initiatives. And one of them is um, really close modeled after Move Your Mind from Waterloo, um, which we I had met with Kristen about that a couple times back in just before the pandemic really hit or kind of in that year before and we had planned on it. I'd actually hired a coordinator for the program and then, um, then COVID. So we're back to looking at getting that underway and um, so Stacy would love to hear anything, any, what, where, where that program's at for you. Uh, yeah, Donna, do you know Donna Reams? She's actually coordinating Move Your Mind in Kristen's absence, so you could reach out to her. Um, we did keep it running through the entire pandemic, so um, uh, yeah, so I would reach out to her for any like specific questions on it. Okay, thanks, that's helpful. Yep. yep. To, to Leanne's point there, kind of the second point we wanted to touch on is just to pick everybody's brain and see what initiatives, if any, um, depending on, on how you're open and in what stage of opening you're at, um, what kind of an initiative or initiatives are you putting in place that will address students' mental health? I know just, you know, for a point of interest, we did a survey. Um, Windsor's opening a new fitness facility, so we tried to uh, issue a survey to pick the brains of the students and see what what programs are interested in and you know maybe how some trends have changed over the last 18 months and one of the questions we put in there were what were the perceived benefits of coming to a fitness facility and obviously you know the, the physical wellness mental wellness you know spiritual wellness social wellness and uh, mental mental health or mental wellness was actually the uh, the top scoring point out of that survey so I mean, it, like what Leanne said, it is super important. We are hearing um, for certain things. So um, that will be the, the second topic that we talk about. What initiatives is, are everybody putting into place that is addressing uh, the need for um, programs surrounding mental health or mental wellness? Uh, so Mike, I'm not sure if I'm super clear, like, um, for us on campus, we are, um, we have to be 
very careful and stay in our lane, so to speak. And um, like, I don't know if you're asking physical activity and how it relates to mental health and mental wellness, but um, we're not doing anything like that would be campus wellness um, or health services. We call them campus wellness for us um, to be running programs and initiatives like that. We are running um, a program that we're calling Warrior Reset. And so that is um, built on the premise that there is education around um, connecting the big picture to physical, you know, healthy mind, healthy body sort of sort of stuff. So um, sleep, um, nutrition, um, accountability, uh, physical activity, obviously, as well. Um, so we are in the process, we've run a couple of um, trials. We ran one through the pandemic um, and we're running a couple of trials and now we're starting to reach out to run it with our, um, some athletes and, um, and gen any general user that joins and then hoping to have um, a staff stream as well, if any staff want to get on. And that's not in-person coaching. So it's a little outside of traditional what we do. It's just, um, it would be like having a health coach uh, online where they connect and um, they can connect with each other and connect with uh, myself or our trainers um, if they have questions on stuff broader than just physical activity. Stacey, are you using any particular software to, to manage that? We're using Teams and um, we have oh. like weekly educational videos that get sent out via um, just email. And then we're using teams and all the teams channels for, um, you know, like we do a coffee chat, we, we're doing individual check-ins, uh, we're doing, um, you know, any education sort of that comes up, we put all of that um, through on teams, because all of our students have to be on that anyways, for a variety of their classes. Cool, very cool. Angelia, what's happening in your, in your neck of the woods? So um, very similar to what Stacy said that, you know, kind of staying in your lane is a little bit of a thing <laughs> for us as well. Um, but we are looking to see uh, what we can do. So there is like the broader idea where, you know, um, healthy body equals healthy mind, like Stacy said. Um, so a lot of our promotions and such are building off of that. We're actually going through um, a big marketing launch where we're involving uh, the university's marketing team. And we're trying to basically um, help students build that connection that that activity is actually a learning strategy like you are smarter when you're active um and so there's a lot of work on that end to help build the connection for students um in terms of things that we're doing for mental health specifically the hope is that we're going to actually um relaunch our instructional programs under a different name um they're going to go under learn two um so people think less of first aid and CPR courses and have a clear understanding of what the programming is about. And the thought there is to try to offer some type of um, free programming for students, whether it's meditation, um, uh, workshops on like gratitude and, and different things like that. So just having various specialists on campus actually uh, see if they're uh, wanting to collaborate with us and to teach these kind of like one-off workshops throughout the semester. We, um, that sort of reminded me, we, uh, during the pandemic, we ran, a, it was free, a mini mindfulness course. Um, so they registered up for it, but it was free and we had quite a few people um, jumping in and we had just had one of our yoga instructors um, who created it. We've had, um, in terms of mental health very much you know keep the staff and our programming within scope of practice um more around the education piece and our social media is where we've really pushed it of talking about um posts and stories around uh the connection it, what we were what Evangelina, Evangelia was just saying around uh, the connection between academic success and being active, the, the healthy 
healthy habits supporting you and supporting you in school and uh, and and that we've gone on an angle of you know like you don't have to come in and do a two hour workout. It can be um, little. There was research that came out of Mac around. Um, exercise snacks and there's a YouTube video around there. So we did some posts that linked to that. And it basically was talking about all the stuff that we know that you can just climb some flights of stairs. You can do little bits of activity throughout your day. And um, it actually does have a effect on your cardiovascular health. And um, yeah, so that's been, that's been good. Uh, we've got, I have a, an intern, right now, which is great. And his real focus is around um, uh, uh, engagement because our, our undergrads pay for their membership to the Pulse through their student fees. I know everybody here kind of, everyone has a bit of a different model. Um, so, you know, we don't really have a sales focus at all except for personal training and instructional programs. Um, and so it's really about justifying those fees to the student union so that they think that there's value. So we're trying really hard to demonstrate programs and engagement and giving the students what they want. And, a, and actually a big part of that, it feels like the link between physical activity, physical health and mental health is becoming more clear to folks on campus. So um, as I, said like the, our next initiative is going to be something we're not going to call it move your mind but it's going to be very similar to um the program that waterloo has been running for several years now i would add one thing that we were doing at um ontario tech and Durham college we started during the pandemic to um offer a campus rec resource library so uh, every day there is new resources there under four headings so it was um, there's exercises and workouts um, healthy eating and nutrition just for fun and mental health and wellness so I'm doing that not every day but um, Monday Wednesday Friday still adding to that library so students can go and find a list of resources there and just kind of pick and choose at their own uh, kind of on their own time um, Luckily, we did a couple of more classroom visits when students were invited on, back on campus, which I was really happy with. So it was mostly with the KIN program, but going actually to their classes to invite them to the flex. And again, just being another person to remind them of that movement and you know all, all of those things are going to be helpful to them um, and that we are open and letting them know what our programming was. So that was nice because we generally try to do that, but I wasn't sure if we'd have too much uptake this year. So that was one good thing. Um, and then we're hoping, we haven't done it so far this semester, but um, a lot of our staff have done training around who can play. So we're hoping to do a lot more kind of about LGBTQ kinds of things and have some varsity nights around that. So hopefully we'll be more accessible to some of those students who would normally not attend maybe varsity events or come to the gym, trying to open ourselves up to them. Um, there was one more thing I was gonna add and now I can't remember. Oh, and I think you've done a really good job about um, just letting our staff know how important that customer service piece is. So I see myself included are on the floor a lot more. Looks like I've met lots of new members and just kind of, so they have that feeling of connection with us. Um, one of the signs that we have right as, as soon as you walk inside the gym, it's huge and it says you belong here. And just those personal connections that we're making with people, even though it's really small. Um, I think like, I know there's probably four or five students who now stop by my office regularly to kind of check in and chat. Um, what I, I think we did that well before, but probably it's now more intentional than it was pre-pandemic. So those are a couple of things that uh, we've been up to. Yeah, <laughs> once there started um, little mini challenges, which I think Andy, this is kind of um, what you're talking about is just having people around people, creating those like, tiny conversations that weren't there over the past year and a half, but you know, we now have the opportunity to, to be more intentional about starting those up. Um, so we have a, a little mini challenge going on that's basically, uh, you can sign up and it's obviously free, um, but it's just who's got the highest frequency of visits over seven days. And we had like, I think 61 people sign up for it and everyone's been coming every day and chatting with the front desk and, you know, asking questions about it. And it's, something we're going to carry forward with um, other mini challenges, you know, two a month or something like that. And, um, you know, build up a little bit more of a, a friendly competitive community within our fitness facility. So people will start not only talking to the staff, but start talking to each other about those types of things as well.
Wow, I feel like I haven't done nearly as much as the rest of you this year. Um, I'm trying to survive and trying to get everyone back up, but we did put in a proposal for a full-time person for one-time funding. Um, so that person would be running a Move Your, similar to Move Your Mind program, as well as uh, getting into academic classrooms to do stretch breaks. Um, so we're hoping that that funding will come through and that we'll have a one-year position um, for that program. And then we will have ongoing funding um, based on the success of that uh, thereafter. So that's one huge initiative that kind of links not just academic, um, but also right into the classroom and hopefully it'll pull people back into our center. Uh, additionally, we have partnership with um, student experience in the other side. So there is a thriving in action um, group that goes on. It's based off of Ryerson's uh, Thriving RU program. Um, and with that, we're providing fitness classes and fitness memberships for the people that are going through that program. Um, and that's a really good connection because it's a, not a lot of work on our end, but it is a good partnership and it does bring people into our building um, that are struggling and that uh, might not come in our doors otherwise. So it's been a nice, nice connection. I always like when you can make those partnerships and there's not as much work on our end um, to bring people into our building that normally wouldn't come in. So. On that note, um, I know, Dan, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, Michelle, like it, it's easy on a Zoom call to talk about the work you're doing and, and make it sound like it's really great, but I'm also just trying to survive. <laughs> I've had a lot of long, hard days and a lot of days where I'm like, why the hell am I doing this? This is crazy. So um, yeah, like this is my nurse of face I guess I have on right now. <laughs> Don't, don't feel like you're alone in, in that because you're not. It's been um, August and September was absolutely off the charts. I everyone, everyone in our department was walking around saying there's never been a year like this. This is right. It just was not um, it was not good, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, I second that 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah, like when you said that, I'm like, oh no, I don't have it together. If that's what I'm making that impression, I'm faking it very well. So, yeah. I would say from the new guy perspective, you guys are, are making it look very good. So I appreciate the effort. <laughs> that's half the battle. Fake uh, it to make it. That's how it works. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I mean, ultimately, I said in a meeting a couple of weeks ago, you know, rec fitness, it, it's supposed to be fun. We're supposed, this is, this is the good time department, right? Like this is where the students want to be. We're the only building where hopefully they're here because they want to be here. Not that they don't, you know what I'm saying? But, um, and so as long as we're keeping people safe, um, that's, both physically and emotionally, mentally, psychologically, you know, um, that's, that's a big part of our job. So, um, did, uh, what are you, uh, just another quick question for everybody. What are your participation numbers like right now? Um, and, uh, you know, what programs maybe do you have available or are there certain things that you haven't brought online yet with coming back in COVID and all of that? I was excited to talk about this part from, um, I know we started our group fitness classes back up in September and I think all of us were on a, a bit of a misnomer that, you know, we were told that 60% of students would be back on campus. So I think we were thinking that we would be programming at 60% of where we were, but then we found out, you know, when we were here and we already had put our programming together, um, that a student is considered on campus if they have one two hour class a week so we're definitely not seeing the participation for sure so um, we would typically run pre pandemic 35 to 40 group fitness classes um, a week and right now um, I programmed 14 four had nobody show up for the first three weeks, um, so we can't collapse those. So we're running 10 classes per week, but in those 10 classes, we have 37 people. So really, really slow uptake in group fitness, which I was kind of surprised because everything else that I was reading, um, you know, in the summers, people will be dying to get back and they're going to be so excited to be in a classroom, but that's just not been in our experience. So I just actually sent out our group fitness schedule for the winter to our instructors for their confirmation, but um, 
I still have only programmed 15 classes and I'm hopeful that there'll be more people on campus um, so that we will have, but I think one of the hard parts is the remote you know, learning and kind of how or and work um, how and how we're set up is, you know, we might need to change that in the future. Um, in terms of personal training, we're having, we might have maybe five or six clients right now that are going in and out of our facility. And then in terms of the facility, we would run, you know, in the morning, we might have 18 people here. I think the most we've ever had might have been in the 70s. So we're still not seeing huge uptake. You know, it's, it's steady, but it's more like a summer study, not definitely not like a like a typical fall? I think, Angie, that group fitness, people who are used to pre-pandemic who were your class participants have found other places to, to do that and be online. So I haven't seen a big fluctuation of return to group fitness as well. We started with outdoor classes and we just moved them indoor in October, just after Thanksgiving. But our numbers are dismal. Like I am running 30 classes a week, but I probably shouldn't be running any of them based on our numbers. So um, I'm not sure if group fitness will rebound to what it ever was pre-pandemic. Is anybody offering spin right now too? Because I was, I didn't offer it in the, okay. So I didn't offer it in the fall and it, it's somebody else is taking over that area for now and I'm letting them continue through the winter. Um, and then I thought we'll try again in the spring and summer and maybe even get some likes outside sometimes. But um, yeah, I just was nervous about our uptake. If, if people weren't coming back for yoga for relaxation, are they coming back to a ring where people are working out at high intensity without a mask on? Yeah, so we're offering, we do about 24, 25 classes a week in fitness. Um, some classes are full to capacity. Um, our spin studio capacity, well, we removed our capacities like two weeks ago, but um, previous to that, our spin studio capacity was low, like I think six, pe six people, but it would fill. Um, and then a couple of classes in particular, our numbers are, you know, in the 20s. Um, but uh, there's other classes where there might be like three or four people. Um, our instructional, our learn to box and our salsa um, sold out um, completely up to the capacity of the studio that we were allowed for in September. Um, we didn't sell as many fitness memberships for fitness classes as we have in previous terms. So we're not necessarily where we used to be, but um, but it was, it's pretty decent, I think. Um, then personal training, we've sold, I, I think, 20-ish packages um, this term, and they just keep coming in. I, I feel like personal training feels like a safe activity right now. Um, instead of, like you said, um, Angie, just going into a class and feeling safe in you know, a large group setting. Um, and I was just actually looking, they just posted our um, total user numbers. Um, so it, for our total users in September, we had 50,000 um, interactions and 11,000 distinct users. And, and September did feel a little bit slow for us. And then in October, we went up to 65,000 and 14,000 distinct users. And we, they estimate we have a, on average, maybe 20,000 students on campus. So we're pretty happy with our like general usage numbers um, that are coming in out of the facility. We also have a brand new facility, so that might, <laughs> might change the picture a little. So you, how, for your October, you said 12,000 distinct users? Uh, 14, 14, 14,000. Yeah. So you have 70% 70, 70 of the on-site students using your facility? Um, sure. <laughs> I can't do that math quick. But yeah, they estimated, I say 20,000 was the average. They said 17 to 23,000 um, that are either enrolled or living around campus. Can, this is a total new guy question, and I hope you don't mind me throwing this in here. What, like, what is, is there a goal from an educational standpoint of a percentage that you would want of your on-campus students using your fitness facility? Um, I, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. We actually, we've never even had like a tap system to get in. So a lot of these numbers are new with our new facility. Um, so I don't, I don't even think there were, there might be a goal now, but there hasn't been for the last eight years. <laughs> gotcha. okay. We just kind of yeah. tracked the best we could by a head count, so to speak. So, yeah. 
Mike, we're always asked, they always want to know the numbers, especially of first years who have been in our building. Um, but we've never had like you have, you know, we want 80% of the people using our facility. Our facility is too small for our entire undergrad population even to use it. So, um, but they are always interested in numbers, especially compared to previous years. So it's just yeah. how you get used to reporting. Yeah, we um, were funded by the student the students fund us um, on our campus. So all of our numbers are given every year in an SSAC report. And that's how we, um, that's how we advocate for more funding for, you know, whatever program, the new building, all of those types of things. So they're definitely relevant numbers. I just, we don't really have an accurate comparison. So at Ryerson, um, it, it was a, a very uh, interesting September in that not only were we dealing with COVID, but we had a facility that wasn't uh, opening on time. <laughs> so we have the two facilities. We have the RAC, which is the older facility, the original one, and the MAC. So the MAC um, did open, and it actually started in the summertime, but with no group fitness. Um, so the studio that's there actually became a spill-off space to the to kind of be used like as a recreation space for like stretching from those who've left the weight room or the cardio room um, so that didn't leave any place for us to program at the mac um, and rec went from opening on september 7th to september 13th to september 20th <laughs> so we were constantly changing our start dates <laughs> um, and uh, when we did get back in person we have about 25 classes um, with eight of them in person, the rest all virtual since we're probably like 95% virtual in terms of our students' academic classes. And we had a cap of 10 people um, per in-person class. And um, at the beginning, it was a little low, but then it did pick up. Um, and some classes are completely full. Um, some are a little bit less. We recently just went up to 15 uh, capacity per class. And so we are trying uh, seeing that those classes that were popular are actually filling up to the 15. So, um, it, January for us will be obviously very different. The hope is to be in person as much as possible with no caps, um, but who knows <laughs> with all these uh, increased numbers going up with COVID cases and such. So um, doing okay. Um, I think we would have liked to see all the classes considering there's just the eight, but we did know so many of our students were not gonna be on campus anyway. So we did keep a pretty hefty virtual program. Is anyone else continuing with virtual classes now that if you're back in person? We're doing just a few. Um, we actually found it was our members that would gravitate to the virtual classes and we lost a lot of our students um, in the virtual format. They are more interested in coming in person and for that experience and the social connection, not that the members are not, um, but I think with the members, they've been with us for so long, they already have those connections with the instructors. So it was a natural gravitation that they would just follow along to the virtual. Whereas with students who, you know, you lose them every four years. There were so many that didn't have the connection with instructors. So um, it'll be maybe one to two a day virtual and the rest will be going in person for um, winter. Yeah. It was a lot, uh, institutional membership to Bright. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but uh, it's basically an, an online fitness platform. So they do, um, you know, fitness classes, yoga, mindfulness, uh, some nutrition coaching, which I thought was kind of cool. Any engagement to like write home about over the summer? Um, it picked up a little bit in September, October, because they did a, a challenges um, to increase engagement. But it's really only like, honestly, like 1% of our total student population that is, is kind of buying into it and using it regularly. Um, so, and again, from the survey that we sent out, there is a, a large ask from the student population to go back to in-person classes. So I'm hoping they do take, take off. We're gonna start offering them in January, um, but it, to know from the information that you've mentioned, 
that you know some of them are really popular some of them you kind of have to work to market a little bit more um, i hope people do come back uh, virtual classes are definitely a benefit in where we were but i think the uh, face-to-face -face interaction and the, the social connections that can be made in an actual class are much more um, for everything now, but um, yeah, I'm just excited for personal classes to come back in person. We have a small library, Michelle, of classes that we recorded in the spring and summer. Um, so there's about 40 that students still have access to, but we haven't added to it since we've been open in the fall. <laughs> Yeah, we have the same thing. They can register and get, I think there's like six weeks of classes in there maybe. It's just a, it's like a Netflix selection. Um, we tried to offer uh, just one online this September and, and nobody showed up to it. Yeah, that was the same. We, we had um, a pretty robust online programming over the last, during the closure. Um, and then as we went back to in-person services, people started coming less. So we've got one yoga class that we're doing online right now. And I don't think we'll do anything in January, but we did make a uh, um, extensive video library of all the online classes and have posted those on our YouTube channel with a link from our website. Um, so there's resources there if someone wants to do a virtual workout, which is great. We never really had that in place before. Um, yeah. Just kind of, I want to go back to the, uh, I guess the initiatives that people are putting in place just for a quick second, uh, maybe to pick your brains about a program we're looking at. Um, and it's got, it's got the, the mental health aspect to it in the sense that it will support students to a, a greater degree. Um, we're looking at uh, onboarding trainer eyes as a, sort of a platform for students who, you know, they might come into the forge and sit down with the trainer and understand why they should be working with the trainer. But I'm sure as this is true everywhere, students don't have a ton of expendable income. So they might understand the reasons why they need a trainer, but can't afford it, or maybe they can't even afford small group training, but we'll have these sort of program uh, design support um, packages that they can purchase. Has anybody done anything like that with a similar platform or have you done something that you've created on your own where that's an, an option to support the students just from like a program design aspect? So we do, we have, um, we have a couple of options. Um, we have our like how to write your own program webinar where we walk people through like from step one to the end. Um, and then we have, it's a workout at home. We haven't done one yet for um, being in person, but we have a workout, like an at-home workout where they could just go and download it. And I think it was, I wanna say it was a three month workout program maybe. Um, so we have those two options for them. Um, at, for us bringing on um, outside uh, apps or platforms is very, very, very difficult to get approved on campus. Um, our, our IT, um, it goes all the way up to like the safety, like, uh, it, good luck. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are like, but we try to um, pass one thing, like something through and like, we it, it got looked at so closely that even like the questions they ask on the onboarding um you know could they word it this way or could they word it that way or whatever it might be but mostly what it comes down to is security and if there's a breach within the app and um, what um, personal information is being shared and our school just won't um support support them because most of those apps don't have university level security on them i would say that's interesting information because I did kind of have that um, conversation with the, the gentleman that gave me the demo of the program. He was asking me about payment processes and I'm saying like we're not going to link payment processes through you and through the university. Like we'll, we'll find a different way to do it, a workaround. Uh, and said specifically like we, we don't deal with any colleges in the states because of privacy issues. So I'm I'm sure I'm in for a fun conversation trying to get this going, but uh, that, that helps. Thank you. I had similar 
issues getting um, conduct in to and approved um, and conduct works very well. Uh, we use it slightly with our personal training, but a lot, very heavy on our varsity side um, and it works very well. But one of the things that uh, made us go with conduct as opposed to its competitors was that it's Canadian hosted. Um, so a lot of universities especially wanna make sure that all information is staying on in Canada and not going stateside. Um, so, but it was months and months till we got approval on that, uh, that program as well. Uh, Michelle, what is conduct? Like what's the, what's the purpose of it? So its primary purpose is, uh, it was developed for strength conditioning. It's used by a lot of NFL, NBA, and, um, and professional hockey teams. Uh, you can put out strength conditioning um, programs. And so if I was to assign you a program, you click on each thing and there's a video on how to do each exercise. And you can put in like your reps, your sets, um, everything within that. But it also has on the back end, you can upload forms, you can have a daily survey that goes out that's a mental health survey or a body soreness or a perceived exertion after each workout. So there's a lot of things that are um, embedded within the program that allow you to have more data on your athletes or um, clients. And you have, but somebody has to be monitoring that. So we have a sports psych person who is monitoring a couple of the teams and she sends out um, every other day, she sends out surveys. So she's keeping track of their mental health on that side as well. Um, so it's, it's a really great program. Um, if you're interested and in I can give you some more information later. Yeah, I was just curious, we use um, Team Builder um, with our athletes, but I, th I think the difference between uh, that and what like we had tried to get approved is there's no personal information um, coming um, like credit card info and personal info coming from um, questionnaires on the app, like if you guys are uploading everything to it. But. So we don't load, the only thing we upload is the person's name and email. And right, anything yeah. else is the user is entering in that, but we don't have any payment process through Conduct. Right. So, yeah, the, yeah, our athletes use Team Builder. So I was just, yeah. I think it's very similar. Yeah, it is. Team Builder just didn't, when we looked at it, it just didn't have the capability to do um, what we needed in terms of, we have Fowler Kennedy as our um, physios and doctors. And so we were able to load up medicals and other forms like that oh, awesome. uh, and conduct. And I don't think you could do that on Team Builder if I remember correctly. Our city teams use Team Builder as well. And that's the first system I looked at to see if it would work for something like this. And it does, but uh, Michelle, you're right. Like something like conduct from what I know of it and trainerize the ability to, to, you know, to message with your, your athletes or your clients or to put those surveys up there or enter in waivers and that type of stuff is, uh, is beneficial as well. I just have a student here. I'll be right back. Um. One of the other things we wanted just to touch on was finding out from you all where you're at with your COVID protocols. Um, have you gone fully where, you know, in line with what the province is allowing? Are you being more conservative than that? Um, is your building completely every area up and running? We've touched on a bit of that, but just curious. Uh, so we follow whatever public health tells us we can do um so we are like our we no longer have capacities like since the last um sort of announcement um we no longer have capacities we are upholding the capacity in our studio just um for the sake of comfort in terms of how like full it could get um but our fitness center and our open rec we do not have capacities anymore um masks are used in transition but they do not need to be used during when you're actually doing your physical activity um and they have to show a proof of vaccine and um their COVID screen at the front and we've just again with that um change over like two weeks ago on november 1st we opened up access to 
um, change rooms and lockers and all that stuff. So we're, we're pretty much open with masks and some vaccine reports, <laughs> I would say. I would say we're really similar as well, Stacey, with everything that you had just said. Um, one question I did have, though, is when you say you have lifted capacity, I know we're doing the same following what our Durham Regional, or our Durham Regional Health is recommending, or public health. Um, but I wasn't comfortable with lifting it totally. So I asked that we keep our occupancy counter on. We're using Fusion um, so that we at least know how many people are going are here. Um, so I, yeah, so my question was in terms of capacity, you know, once we hit January, could there possibly be, sorry, my director's just here. Um, would it, would you possibly go back to capacity? Or like, so what happens if there's 5,000 people in your facility? Like do we, but that's why I didn't want to let go of the F50 counter for that reason. And then also through Fusion Go, like the app, then students can also look and see how many people are in the facility in real time. So they can decide whether it's too busy for them or they want to come now because it's quiet or they want to go now because there's more people there. So there was kind of twofold reasons why I wanted to keep it. But I was wondering, do you even know what the capacity of your facility is? I don't think we do because um, I think it's something we haven't wanted to know. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but yeah, I just wonder what people are doing around capacity. So yeah, I, had, I had to ask, sorry, Stacey, I had to ask um, what our what our fire codes were for certain rooms. And they said that that wasn't what we gauged it by. It was just sort of like, as far as the fitness facilities, 100% is the limit that we put on it as far as uh, how comfortable people were working out pre-pandemic. So uh, Andy, to your point, like for Fusion, having that counter of who's in the facility is going to be helpful. We're onboarding that as well. Um, and I've really helps you know even just planning ahead if i'm going to leave my house for the gym i can see ahead of time how many people are there or super packed or if it's you know i'm going to be more comfortable coming in when there's uh, less people there yeah for us i i don't know if how an occupancy counter would work because i mean the open rec could be jammed and nobody in the weight room so i don't think that would be a good indicator for us in terms of um, encouraging the students to use that to decide when they want to show up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. And uh, like Mike said, like we have fire code, but if we were at fire code capacities, it'd be too busy without COVID. So um, our, our sort of um, mentality pre-COVID, and I would say now as we're starting to open, is that people will um, and are going to have to learn to and have learned to self-select. So um, if you're not comfortable, then come at 7 a.m. or find a time when you are comfortable, you know, to come in and use the space. We are keeping our capacities on our studios just because um, it's like it's an easy process to do in Fusion, um, but we don't have separate counters for our weight room or open rec or, you know, that sort of thing. So it just, it makes it a little bit too difficult and complicated that way. So we're hoping um, people will turn around and go do something else or go into the studio or go into the spin studio if they feel like the weight room's too busy or whatever, or go to our other facility. We have two facilities. Yeah, we're, we're doing, we're very close to um, everything you described, Stacy. Uh, we have, uh, but except for the capacity thing. So we're we're open. We're offering almost every service that's available, besides what's closed for construction, like our climbing wall and and some other things are limited with our facility under construction. With Stacy knows well, um, the uh, the capacity thing. Um, exactly what Angie said when when we were lifting them um, I pushed back a little bit to maintain a lower capacity so we're in three spaces and um, partly because we went from having uh, one big space and a second space and then we now we were in three spaces which is a whole other story that's with the construction our part of that was to space our equipment out so that we could so physically distance and let people use machines and not be beside each other um so there's not really enough equipment to justify having more than uh, like 120 people in our huge sport hall which is our main massive gym that we've taken over so we're keeping those capacities for now um i haven't come up with a solution for january yet and we're no, we do have uh scanning we're scanning in at all three of our locations so you scan to get into the building and then you scan to get into the pulse is our fitness center 
but um, we don't exit scan. So it doesn't really help me very much with how many people are actually in each space. And we could exit scan, but it's just, we would have to use it just, it would be a nightmare. So um, we've got, we're, we've gone back to the old school way that we were doing pre pandemic, where we would check areas of our gym, which was two floors and uh, multiple studios um, with a counter, you know, so our trainers walk around with a counter and count and they do a log and we've kept those. So we know kind of how many people, I mean, we have accurate numbers, really accurate numbers of attendance and participation through fusion but we would know exactly how many people were still in the space because, and that's what we're doing now. So we're gonna wait list. We, we haven't had to this November. I'm anticipating in January when Matt goes, we're gonna be fully in person. Almost all classes are in person. I think we're going to see, and it's January, right? You can't work, like you're not gonna work out outside and it's January, you wanna work out, New Year's resolutions, all of that. So I'm a little bit anxious about the capacities and maintaining it and keeping people happy. We did a staff training yesterday around adjusting to the new protocols and, and how to handle like the customer service side of things. So fingers crossed. So Leanne, do they, um, do they have to sign up to scan in or if like they scan and they're like, sorry, you're not allowed in? Like, how does that work? Yeah, that's a good question. So up until uh, last week, we were, this past week, we were doing, you had to sign up. So you signed mm -hmm. up for a time slot and you could come in. Now you can come in. We have three locations, Sport Hall. It's the most popular one. It's got the most equipment. Um, and it, what we're anticipating is if there could be a wait to get in, like a, a line. So, um, and then we would send them to one of the two other spots. Um, if we get this is where I'm not, I met with my, my boss this morning and we talked about this and I said, I'm not sure what January is going to look like. You know, we, September went really well, but I'm, um, if we're saying that they can, you know, even if we go, we could eliminate capacities altogether before COVID, you would come into the pulse at 5.30 on a Monday and it felt like a rock concert. There were so many people and right, like just packed. So can we, like, that feels very uncomfortable for me. And, and what, but what you're saying too, is then do people get to then self-select? Does someone walk in intending to work out at 5.30 on a Monday, look at the hordes of people and say, no, right? I'm not going to. I, I think the majority of our students are, are they would stay. They would like to go to yeah. the rock concert. That's the yeah. vibe I'm getting. They, they seem pretty you know they're really keen to do in person mm -hmm. yeah that's our struggle too like I we had capacities when we had to sign up um but we don't sign up anymore <laughs> and so because we don't scan into the weight room I we don't have an option of capacities we take stats like a head count like you said Leanne but um we don't unless we get people to sign up but I don't that's complicated on fusion too because we're not limiting them to the one hour time slot and all that stuff we did during the pandemic so um January makes me very nervous as well <laughs> we also have a new facility so we don't know yeah. what our limits are like what they look like or what what they are so uh, Stacey, so, this is the first January you had there yeah we literally opened like a week before school started. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just fresh in September. Stacy, side note, I had a call with Bill yeah, the, uh, meet us yesterday. Yeah. And he said, how are things? Are you on track? Are you on time? And I'm like, of course we're not. <laughs> oh, you're sounding more and more like Stacy every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just don't ask me until I tell <laughs> That's you. That's what he told me. You said, I'm like, we're yeah. probably going to get there very soon. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, folks, I'm realizing that it's 2.30 and we're scheduled for an hour just quickly because I want to be, um, and my video's off because my uh, connection was getting a little scrambled. Um, anything else, like Mike and I had an interesting conversation about showers. Our showers are reopened, which is very exciting. Um, we were talking about how, you know, not being able to shower can be a real barrier to participating in activity for some folks. Um, especially when you, you know, for a whole host of reasons, including mental wellness, mental health. Um, was there any others that any of you wanted to bring forward? Anything 
that we didn't talk about that you were eager to discuss? I had a question, if you don't mind. We're three looking at um, whether or not we'll go back to accepting community members. So I don't know, is anybody else in a situation where you have community members you used to, you don't now? Just wondering about that. We, we have, um, we kept, we didn't accept them for the first couple of weeks of September. It was September 21st. We let them return, um, very low uptake. Our community members have always been a less than 10% of our fitness members are community members. Um, now it's, we have like, there's probably 15 of them all, all said. Um, but again, maybe come January, we might see an upswing in that. I'm wondering if they went, you know, figured out other places to go. We were closed for so long that perhaps they've gone to crunch and good life. And I don't know. Ryerson has been uh, students only up to last week. Um, but the rack, the one building is still remaining students only for the rest of the semester. <laughs> So um, members are only allowed um, at certain times. <laughs> so they're allowed in morning membership. So prior to 10 a.m. and weekends. And then the hope is to uh, kind of open that up more and more throughout the semester um, with the hope that everything's back to normal in January again. We are also, we only offer memberships to staff, faculty, alumni. We don't offer memberships to the greater community, but we are um, students. We have been students only um, up to now as well. We are also only students. We have staff faculty who are hounding us daily. Um, and we usually have community at this time too, but we haven't opened it up to any of the, anyone because we're still not, um, we still haven't list, lifted our capacity and we're still doing reservations, so. Until that leaves, we really can't, but it has been quite nice without them here. I don't know about other schools, but they tend to be the biggest complainers and the biggest um, high expectations of service. Yeah. And I don't know with the rest of you, but for our fitness instructors, they were in a forced position where now it's like their students are in front of them. And, you know, with the members, they get chatty, they'll, you know, they're connected with them, uh, but now it's really forced them to look at who their new audience is and build more of those connections. So it's been lovely <laughs> being just students only. We would, I would say that 90% of my incidents around behavior rule breaking, all of that is been community members over my time. You know, they, they're, they represent 10% of our population and 90% of my problems. So I was in no rush to have them back, but they pay. So they're back. And so far, so good. The ones that were troublemakers seem to be gone. Yeah. Um, any, any, anything else before we wrap up? Well, I, I love connecting with peers at other schools. I was got to get up to Waterloo a couple of weeks ago to see Stacy's beautiful new facility expanded and renovated and all her beautiful new equipment. So that was, uh, that was nice. Um, anytime anyone's in the Hamilton area, if you want to drop by McMaster and see our construction zone, you're welcome or wait a year or five and then maybe I'll have a new facility too. Um, and I think Mike, we've got another, um, meeting scheduled down the road right not necessarily through nursa but fitness leads yeah yeah uh december 3rd uh if anybody is interested in joining that conversation it's a little bit more of an open agenda like this and it's kind of a standing monthly meeting um get everybody together and and i now i know nursa does a lot of that as well but uh you know people are welcome to join um, and I think now too, it's, it's like Leanne was saying, it's nice to get in touch with people, see people, you know, you guys have, it's, you already know each other from past experiences and stuff like that, but it's good to see old faces or new faces as well. So, um, if anybody's interested in joining, just shoot me an email and I'll share the link and, uh, yeah, go on. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Have a great afternoon. It's Thursday. We've almost to the weekend. Almost so, uh,
Yeah, yeah. Well, good work, everyone. I, we, I think we all know how hard this last little while has been and how much work's been put into it. It's not just you, Michelle. We're all feeling it. <laughs> um, but it's it, that's what makes this connecting with colleagues really nice. So have a, have a great afternoon and thanks for your time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for organizing. Bye, guys. Bye. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.